Hi, you with Julian on the Brown Notes, doing a lot of album reviews on the Sunday afternoon while I drink wine, which is for some reason my lonely pastime. Um, but I've got so many albums, and a lot of them are like really prominent ones. So I've started with the hardest <laughs> and most pain in the ass, which is the new album by A Vampire Weekend. Only God is above us. Only God was above us. I say the biggest pain in the art is it's the one that I'm probably going to go into most depth about. Vampire Weekend formed in New York City, the most trendy Brooklyn band, even though they're probably not from Brooklyn, um, that you could possibly imagine, insufferably so. Everything about them screamed murder me. Their preppy jumpers over the shoulders, posh college boy thing. And it was just impossible to hate them. They were so good. Um, their debut album came out in 2008 and it should have made you want to beat them up, but unfortunately it was just too good. And the uh, musical elements, they had one of the most refreshingly interesting indie sounds, uh, the African guitars and polyrhythms and, and arrangements were you know just fantastic uh, formed with Ezra Koenig, uh, Rostam, Chris Thompson and Chris Bio as a four piece and they had one of the best runs probably post Arcade Fire for an American indie band um, first three albums were all fantastic Contra in 2010 and up until now the Pinnacle Vampires Modern Vampires of the City was my favorite of theirs and Step off, off of that album was my favourite of theirs as well. Uh, it was in my Songs of the Century. I loved that album. Now, the interesting part is, is that they were known for having this sort of ethnically wide-ranging sound, which was fascinating. And I think a lot of it was on multi-instrumentalist uh, Rostam. And he was the band's producer, uh, award-nominated producer, um, so when he left in 2016, there was this thought that the band was going to lose an awful lot. And the next album, uh, Father of the Bride, was their least appreciated. And it did seem to be the case that losing this very, very talented man um, who was a multi-instrumentalist and a producer had a big impact on the album. Well, you sure as shit wouldn't know it from this album. In fact, I bet Ross Dam is listening to this album feeling quite sad because they've cloned him in a laboratory somehow and it's clear that musically this album doesn't miss him at all. Um, they're now only a three piece. So only God Was Above Us has just come out and is in the running for album of the year. Um, they've been very consistent, but Vampire, Modern Vampires of the City was 2013, that's 11 years ago, so we've only really had Father of the Bride, their most lackluster album, in that 11 year period, which promotes the notion that when they come back it's not going to be that great. I would say that this is now my favourite Vampire Weekend album. So it is pretty incredible. Um, it's also really concise and actually very um it's probably their most sequenced and lean album as well i think it opens with ice cream piano and the one thing about this album is it is like a greatest hits album for vampire weekend it's like everything they've done in the past done a tiny bit better so I don't know that there's that much in the way that isn't on the other albums sonically, uh, idea-wise, but it's like everything has just got a scrub up and they've just delivered 10 versions of the best stuff that they've done on the previous albums done, mostly a slightly bit better. Um, Ice Cream Piano opens with a very Lana Del Rey-esque F-bomb. I noticed both are playing at Coachella this weekend. I might do a review of Coachella next weekend if I can't be bothered to watch the intensely boring lineup. Um, but it, it, Ice Cream Piano, the first track, gives an idea of how dynamic the band and free-ranging they are on this record, because it's, um, it's, it's got this massive galloping beat straight out of the gate. A really insistent piano. There's lots of um, 
parts of this album where the keyboard playing and the piano playing is in the background but it's got um and, and very good as well but it's got a really insistent piano and one of their most thrusting ever songs i think it's like the whole kitchen sink of vampire weekend thrown in the same song and one of the sonic motifs that is across the whole album is this screeching elephant noise that they use to great effect on a, a, probably three or four of the songs including this one um, and like the opening trifecta of songs is just fantastic uh, the classical number two um, just like melodically through this they're so catchy the choruses a lot of the verses are so effort effortlessly catchy um, very clean vocals which the band are often noted for Ezra's vocals did I call him Ezra it is Ezra Koenig yeah of course it is um, the very sort of clean melodic sound that he gets and his clear enunciation of lyrics is a standout of the band as a sort of sonic motif um, and it's got this great sort of syncopated rhythm which is very unusual and not uh, not standardized sort of for ch -ch drumming um, it sort of wanders around in the background never s sort of touching down um, the first sort of slower track Capricorn was the lead single it's got this really gentle sway and a, and a great sort of bass line in the background, um, a ballad. And for the first of two times, the song Step sort of came to my mind with this cascading sort of almost harpsichord-like piano lines going and the sort of like waltz rhythm to it. Um, another great chorus, uh, which gets better with the addition again of that sort of elephant screeching in the background. Um, Connect track four, um, it's, it's really interesting sonically because it's a double bass and it's got a very sort of double time beat and it feels quite dubby and clubby. Um, and it's almost like the, the double bass functions as a sub bass. It's almost like an IDM soundscape. It's really interesting sonically. Pushing themselves out there, prep school gangsters. Uh, it's a very self it's, the lyrics on this are very seems very self-referential very aware of them their place at the moment who they are as people um and the guitars on this one reminded me a, a bit of like uh, joe jackson is she really going out with him which was a nice twist to the soundscape so far and the most prominent sort of african guitar so far something they're very famed for there's a couple of lesser tracks which function as palette cleaners i think the first one is a surfer which has this sort of washed out king crawl vibe to it it's very spacey and psychedelic pop like pictures of matchstick men from status quo um, and it does function a bit as a palette cleanser it's like the other tracks were a little bit more um laser focused and this one's a little bit more chilled in the background probably not my favorite on the album um but it's still a very good song and i love the um the james bond horns and the strings in it as well um gen x cops another brilliant title um another one referencing you know their place and modern listeners place in this whole landscape um it's it's got the pace and the vibe of like that's first strokes album um, and again the elephant noise uh, it's another great chorus it's a melodically hugely strong album um, Mary Boone is probably the other sort of palate cleanser on the album um, and again probably they're probably Surfer and Ma uh, Mary Boone are probably the least great I think on the album but it has a sonic element in it which is really interesting which is the beat from soul to soul's back to life which I'm now thinking that Primal Screen nicked for Loaded as well. And it sounds a lot like um, Play Era Moby. Was it Porcelain, the instrumental track? Uh, and that's again a palette, palette cleanser and for a one-two punch for the last two songs, which are absolutely up there with the best on the album. Um, Pravda, the, both these songs, I'm, I'm struggling, and if anyone can ever put in the comments what they're about, specifically because they seem half autobiographical uh, and about him but also almost half political there's a lot of mentions of russia in this song uh, in various contexts which um you always ask me about pravda it's just the russian word for truth um he doesn't have a russian background but he has a i think he has a jewish 
Hungarian slash Polish background or something, but that doesn't really relate to being a, a Russian um, and a terrific melody. Um, and the African guitar, again, and bass on it, very, very strong, one of the best songs on the album. And an epic to close it, an eight minute track called Hope, which again reminded me of the track Step uh, at, at parts. But it's a much more wide ranging song. It's um, almost goes into this sort of late period stuff, Jan Stevens um, instrumental development through the middle. And again, the lyrics, um, it seems to be autobiographical, but there's a lot of sort of specter of superpowers and the chorus about an enemy that can't be defeated and so on. I'd love to know, it's very enigmatic. Um, this is a band at their freest, their most adventurous, their most dynamic, um, but also their most streamlined. It's 10 tracks and only one of them is long. It's um, a short album, it, but it, well, it's not short. It is a perfectly lengthed album, perfectly paced, perfectly sequenced imaginative even after all this time and after so long away um, and as this I said at the start it functions like a greatest hits of the band taking sort of like the best few songs off of each album and giving them a polish and a bit more vibrancy and delivering them again um, and the lyrics throughout are enthralling and interesting and enigmatic and I didn't quite get a line on a lot of them as to what they might have meant um, so it's one of the probably the best albums so far this year for me i don't think i've given a score of this since black country new road or moto mammy um so a couple of years ago oh, i did i think i gave lana del rey this score but that was my album of the year last year so it was a year ago so i'm going to give vampire weekend and the album Only God Was Above Us a 9.5 out of 10.